All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. So does Simon Kirk have a few regrets about the way he treated Brian Howe, the late, great Brian Howe? Uh, yes, I'm going to cover it in this video because I continue to remember the amazing Brian Howe. Jeff Scott Soto and I had a little talk a while back about Brian Howe and how he was just the epitome of that melodic rock sound. And there are so many artists out there. My good friend, Brian Cole, he loves Brian Howe. He's currently fronting the Journey tribute band Resurrection and doing a fine job. So uh, if you see the band out there on the road, tell Brian Cole that I said hello. Um, before I get into this video about Brian Howe and Simon Kirk, it's uh, Mitch Malloy, another great singer. This album came out in 2023. It's fantastic. You should get yourself a copy. Um, this is probably Mitch's last uh, foray into um, his own material, or at least making his own music. That's at least uh, what he told me. So again, uh, 61 years old, uh, looks like he's uh, 29. Okay, just, <laughs> I don't get it. Um, whatever he's doing, I think it's just really good genes. And uh, anyway, I need to get some good genes. And it's <laughs> Mitch Malloy. Fantastic album, just straightforward rock and roll, no BS. The way I like him, all right? So uh, Mitch Malloy. All right, uh, on to Brian Howe. Now, I'm a huge Bad Company fan of the Brian Howe era. Here's an example. Uh, Here Comes Trouble. This was the third in a series of blockbuster Brian Howe albums. The first Brian Howe Bad Company album, different production, still really good music on it. And if I saw it at a thrift store, I'd scoop it up because it's Brian Howe. And Brian Howe is brilliant. But it's Dangerous Age, Holy Water, Here Comes Trouble. And then there's a Killer Live album, which comes out because I think they had to fulfill the uh, record label contract. The band at that point uh, had really broken up. You know, they weren't getting along. And Simon Kirk and Mick Ralphs did not like Brian Howe. Brian Howe was a worker bee. And we finally get that acknowledgement here from Simon Kirk. Brian Howe and producer Terry Thomas, I believe, uh, were the key to that success during that era. So anyway, Simon Kirk uh, revealed in an interview that he is still dealing with regrets concerning the late Brian Howe. Finally, somebody is coming around. And Simon Kirk seems like a good guy. The drummer said, that for those interested in bad company, it's important to discuss the Brian Howe era. I'm wondering if um, he's seen a couple of my videos. I was uh, very complimentary of this other band that uh, Simon Kirk is in called Lone Rider, and I've promoted that just the way I promoted Mitch Malloy here. So anyway, um, he says, this is Simon Kirk. It was a period that I feel the band took a different direction. Well, duh. It became more of a hair band and away from the soul. Uh, and it says for the blues rock soul that Bad Company was known for. Um, it's kind of a weird sentence there, but that's what it reads. So if you want and away from the soul for the blues rock soul that Bad Company uh, was known for. So he's basically saying that it was a hair band. Um, I would argue that Brian Howe had plenty of soul. It's just a different style. It's a different sound. It's a different vocal. Um, but he says here, I have a few regrets because we didn't get on with Brian. That's the Brit way of saying that uh, they were fighting constantly. And he says, I won't knock him because he's now passed away. Well, thanks, Simon. <laughs> And again, I tell this story because it irritates me, but when Brian Howe passed away, people were wondering if Paul Rogers was okay. They had heard that the singer from Bad Company was dead, and so everybody was reaching out to Paul Rogers to make sure he was okay, and nobody from the Bad Company camp clarified 
that it was Brian Howe who just passed away because honestly, they don't want to acknowledge Brian Howe, which really ticked me off. Again, if you go on YouTube right now, the Brian Howe stuff is getting a ton of airplay. Uh, people are clicking on these songs. I don't know how he's doing on Spotify, but Brian Howe, people are remembering these albums. They were really important. I was on the radio uh, for all three of these when they hit. And I can tell you, people were going crazy. Every time we would put a new song on the air, I mean, there was a tune called Stranger, Stranger from Holy Water. We played that into the ground and people loved it. And there were other tracks that uh, uh, we just played because we liked them and uh, people were thankful. Those albums uh, weren't filler. They were A-list radio favorites in those days, at least on rock stations. Even Top 40 was playing If You Needed Somebody. They had to. It was too good of a song to ignore. And so it's good to hear Simon Kirk coming to terms with this a little bit. I guess better late than never. He goes on to say, we had our differences, and that's the way it goes. By the way, The Way It Goes is a song from um, Dangerous Age. Um, he goes, but he was a hard worker. Yes, he was. He and Terry Thomas uh, worked to make that band and that sound something that rock radio really embraced during that era. He says, we made some good music. I'm not knocking the music. Well, finally, but uh, I'm pretty sure you did uh, knock the music for quite some time. But hey, it's good that he's coming around here. He says, we made a couple of good albums, and it's funny. Actually, you made three really great albums. I have to remember this band's been around for nearly 50 years, and there are generations that were brought up on the Brian Howe albums. Now, that would, that would be me. I was brought up on those albums, but I was very well aware. Um, one of the first albums I actually went out and purchased was Rough Diamonds. That was the last uh, Paul Rogers album uh, prior to the breakup. And those guys were angry with each other. So these guys have had a history of not getting along with the lead singer, whether it's Paul Rogers or Brian Howe. Uh, they don't talk about how uh, the band broke up because of Paul and because people had big egos and for whatever other reason. Uh, maybe going into the 80s, they didn't think they could maintain their blues rock sound. And uh, here comes Mick Jones to convince them that, hey, you guys uh, should do an album with Brian Howe. Mr. Tied Up in Love from the uh, Ted Nugent Penetrator album. <laughs> Ted. Oh, man. Anyway, if you've never heard Tied Up in Love, uh, Brian Howe, um, I mean, just the vocal on that track is absolutely insane. It just... So anyway, it's good that Simon Kirk is at least giving Brian Howe some credit. He was an extremely hard worker. In fact, Brian Howe talked about this and said, we were doing all the work. And these guys were coming in like it was a burden because um, Brian Howe and Terry Thomas, they had this vision and they had written a whole bunch of great songs. I mean, even like the deepest tracks on these albums are extremely good. And uh, you don't really see that anymore. Um, yeah, some of this new melodic stuff that's coming out, there are albums that are great from start to finish. But in that era, I will say it was rare that you could put the cassette in and you had your auto reverse cassette player and play it from start to finish. And it was like, okay, every song here is great. I'm going to listen to it again. I mean, that's what we used to do in those days. And again, the trilogy, and this is the third in the trilogy. And there is an earlier album, the one that Mick Jones did. And it's uh, it's a bit mellower. It's still really good and has uh, some great music on it. I would buy all of the Brian Howe stuff. And then there's a live album that uh, they had to do, I believe, to fulfill their record contract with Atlantic Records. So... In any event, folks, um, it's good to see that Brian Howe, uh, at least posthumously, is getting 
a little bit of love or at least some understanding from Simon Kirk. All right, this guy needs your love too. Go out and buy this. Make it a late stocking stuffer, a New Year's present. I don't know. Um, it is the last song by Mitch Malloy, and it is fantastic. The guy who was in Van Halen and then out of Van Halen and then in Great White, and then he kicked himself out of Great White, or they amicably uh, parted waves, uh, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I'm getting a little tongue-tied, but I appreciate everybody watching to the end. Thank you so much for supporting this channel this year. Uh, please, if you can continue to do so, um, check it out over on Patreon. If you're not supporting, um, the algorithm is not my friend. Uh, also, YouTube memberships, you guys get sneak previews of these videos. And um, yeah, that's kind of a perk, right? And uh, it's easy to sign up for YouTube memberships. In the meantime, folks, uh, it is the season uh, where the Prince of Peace appears on the scene. So again, pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world. Um, the Middle East is the birthplace uh, of Jesus. So you would think you'd want peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Uh, also, uh, pray for peace in your own heart. And thanks for watching. I will see you very soon.